ISC squared now is offering another uh, certification, the CSSLP, which is for what? Well, it's actually not. Uh, have you tried it? No. Yeah. It, it depends. I mean, it depends on where you come from. I mean, I come from that site. That's what it did with Symantec. So um, it, it's really actually just a few of the, it's, it's more concentration on fewer of the domains. It's the software development life cycle. So it's, it's software life cycle security is what you do with But I mean, they are pushing it hard. Oh, they're pushing it hard. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 They actually, yeah, that's what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is that it might be easier for you to try that. I mean, do the CISSP, of course, and then maybe take a little bit and go back and, since you've already got those other domains, you have the second set of initials, you know, if you want to do it. It's going to take a little bit more on the software development side if you're not familiar with software development. Um, essentially, they're just going to go deeper into those, these domains, the application security domain. It, but it lists out, it's essentially seven of the ten domains, something like that. There's, what, the, like the legal gets left out, something else gets left six out. Six. It's six or seven. I, you know, off the top of my head, I can't remember the exact one. So if you're interested, you know, another set of initials couldn't hurt. Um, if you could, since you're already doing the study for this one here. But the thing is, is that you'll learn about these models, and she goes into more detail, which I do like that she at least mentions them, but she doesn't mention one that's probably the most common these days, is something called Agile. But regardless. All right, anyway, so my programming people here, did you do Agile programming? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you do the Extreme? You know, like the pair program? Yeah, I think that's a kind of thing. You did the Rapid, okay. No. All right, yeah. these are all just models on how to develop an application. And the classic one is just that, it's called the Waterfall. And then the only difference between what we do now is I actually I, I teach a software quality assurance class. And in that class, I just draw a spectrum across here. And that's all it is. So way down at the left end is waterfall. It's very discrete steps. We've, this is our planning phase. This is our coding phase. This is our testing phase. They do not overlap. We go from one to the next, and we get official approval and sign off from one phase to the next. Whereas um, you might hear the term spiral. And essentially now we get some overlap on those phases, but they're still phases. We may back up a little bit, but we're doing it in cycles like this. Then you go all the way to the other extreme on the spectrum. All right, so well, how much customer involvement then is in Waterfall? How much, if, if we're making this for the customer, how much, let's say we're some programming house, we're building a proprietary application, how much customer involvement in Waterfall? A lot, a lot but when? The end. The end. The end. The end. And the beginning, but never in between. It's yeah. It's only at the very beginning they say what they want, and then at the very end, the classic, "Hey, did we give you what you want?" It's kind of late now if you didn't. So, whereas Agile goes to the other extreme. How much customer involvement in Agile program? Complete. They might as well just be there in the office with your programmers. That we are constantly taking little pieces back to them. And they're little. Sometimes they call them sprints or scrum. They're all different flavors. All right, here, where we do a little circle of, of programming, and we say, here, here, you like this piece? Try this, try this, try this. What do you think? And the customer is right there. You know, um, whether we, they're on site with us, whether we just keep sending them pieces of code or whatever to, to say, hey, you like what we're doing. Um, so definitely a different model. Um, but it's almost a cult. If you go to agilemanifesto.org, I mean, it looks like a picture of, like, there's a light. It's just made a picture in the background. There's this light. Um, check it out if you want here. Um, there's this. It looks like they're standing around in a circle around the light, like they're about ready to take some sort of initiation or something. I mean, it just it, it does have a very cult-like atmosphere to it. So, and you'll get some strong agile adherence out there. So, it, it is the, the thing, the, the flavor of the moment. Um, there have been other things in there. I don't think she mentioned. Did she mention pair programming in her book? I like this idea that, that essentially, what what's the problem with software development? When do we introduce vulnerabilities in software? But we sit down to code it. You know, most of those vulnerabilities come in. How, you know, how many lines of code in Microsoft Windows? Hmm. Uh, several million. So, several million lines of code. Yes. What, what do you? How many bugs do you think are in there? Several <laughs> thousand. <laughs> Let's see. How many lines again did you say there were? Wait. So yeah, exactly. See, so that's the issue. It's we introduce the vulnerability right then and there. So software development lifecycle models, that's their idea, that we want to find some way to s reduce that. That's what software quality assurance is about. It's the whole thing. You hear mm -hmm. QA or testing. Well, testing's after the fact. There's even though a sneaky one that turns testing on its end, and she'll talk about it here later, what we call test-driven design. 
What's test-driven design? Microsoft. What's that? Microsoft. <laughs> um, they claim, but literally, we write the test for the code before we write the code. Think about how can you, I know, from a .NET world, you sometimes think, how can I do that? It was, you can't, believe me, there are tools to do this. But we used to have build a little bit. Build a little test a little, build a little yeah. test a little, yeah. Um, we, we did, we had, it depend on who the team was and the product was for like the endpoint protection, they tried to do the, they had um, test scripts first, and then you know, they'd write to the test script, which kind of makes some sense. They were kind of twisting the idea of test-driven design. They weren't all the way there yet. Um, but you'll hear the term, all right, unit testing. What's unit testing? I think the smallest unit of code. Smallest chunk of code you yeah, can. The developer did yeah, I mean, you, maybe a module might, it depends. Whatever, your unit varies from organization to organization, what a unit is. Might be a particular uh, function. function. Yeah. But you're testing just that. So you might even do, you might even feed it, like fake input here, and you have what's called a stub in the driver. All right, with the stub in the driver? Yeah, stub meaning uh, you have the function signature, but you don't have any body in this data. There you go, okay. So, and the driver? Well, One thing that you use to take the stub? Yeah, yeah, well, if it's, a stub is, is the receiving end of this, right, of the call, and basically a driver is the pushing end. So if I need to test something, a module that is looking to get a request, I need a driver, I need to, Test something that feeds out to me, then I need stuff. You see, so that's all it is. It's a, it's a fake piece of code. So now you have to actually act, write code that you're never going to use. All this stuff in a driver. Um, anyway, and so every now and then you'll find folks who have left the drivers actually in the production code on the end, which is really fun too. All kind of yet another way to introduce a vulnerability. All right, I don't want I have to turn anybody here into some sort of application design specialist, but what? do want you to understand when you get through these sections here, um, especially if you look at Sean's sections about the different phases, is why we moved to each of these. What is it we're doing here? What should we be doing at each stage of whatever model we use, at each stage of software development, what should we be doing? Starts with the... Well, hard needs someone. I'll take that. I'll take... Um, if you had said risk analysis, I would have been happy. If you had said uh, testing, I would have been happy if you said security test, it would have been even more happy. Um, I, you know, but risk analysis is, is what we used to we call it way back at the beginning. All right, essentially where we look at what are the, you know, what's the worst that could happen? What are the vulnerabilities there? At every stage, so security happens at every stage of development, not just something we do to test at the end. Hey, is it safe? And so we can get a slap of a code on one. But that's the gold style. We used to write, right? We lock the, the code monkeys in a room, right? And say, build this. And then we come back in a few weeks, and maybe every now and then throw some food and water, maybe some jolt cola or something like that in there too. And clean the papers, right? Hmm? They're cleaning this monkeys? No, I'm not calling you monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you've been in organizations like that, right? I, I worked in one where they run, once we had a deadline, they ran us for 72 hours straight. Um, you know, we, we had the couches there, and we tried to pass out for a little bit and hope that the boss didn't come by and see you. I gotta say one thing, the boss stayed there too. So, all right, at least he was, you know, if I'm going to make you all do it, I'll, I'll help out. But, you know, he essentially kept us going with major amounts of caffeine. Um, major amount, major, major amounts of caffeine. And at 72, yeah. you have to, though, wonder about the quality of the code if you're going to about that 72-hour mark. But this is what happens when you get a leadership that has, you know, promised a functional prototype to NSA on a two-week notice when the product's probably about six to eight weeks yet out the door. Okay. Hey, he saw the opportunity. We can do it. We can do it. We can get this out the door. Come on, it's potential sales. It's an $80,000 drop box. So we're going to try it. So anyway. Anyway, so where does it go in there? So, you know, she goes into a lot more detail about the planning and all this. Uh, what's the difference between functional design and, or, or functional specifications and design 